Hello and welcome to our CAN bus demo for OBD2 over PCAN. Uh, so we are using the Peak Systems PCAN device uh, to be sending OBD2 and, P and uh, CAN data. This is our setup for our OBD2 over PCAN demo. Here you can see the Peak Systems PCAN device. It's plugged in uh, just through a, a uh, USB here to the computer. Here is the Peak Systems device. As you can see, it's green. The status LED green, just solid green, means uh, nothing's connected yet. Um, here we have a custom cable made uh, because OBD2 cables are hard to find, and uh, most electricians don't really work on that. So this is just a Cat5e cable uh, with a sort of uh, DB9. Let me see if I can get that in focus. A DB9 here with uh, can high, can low, and ground. And the cable runs here, which then goes to power. Now it is possible to power a, a device uh, by the Peak Systems PCAN device. However, you need to break open the device and uh, enable some switches. And uh, we've had some trouble opening the device. And I didn't want to break it, so uh, we just have a, another power device here that just plugs in right here and as this is a custom cable it keeps going over and it's pretty long I wanted to make it long so I could reach uh, over to a sort of U, uh, an OBD2 splitter and that's where this is so you can connect multiple OBD2 devices or OBD2 connections here so here it just connects to a, a splitter and then this goes to the heads-up display, which we will be fuzzing. So as you can see, it's it's powered off because the power here isn't turned on. But as you can see, when we power this on, it'll light up. There we are. And it'll stay looking like this until we start giving it some data. Um, so that is our physical setup here, and now I will show you what we have as far as B-Storm. So here you can see the PCAN view, which is an application to view what kind of data is coming through. Uh, now we have some data being sent out by a, by a uh, script. So it just cycles the speed. Uh, the first thing it does is it lets the HUD know uh, that we are sending specific PIDs, that specific PIDs uh, OBD2 PIDs are supported. And so that's what it's doing in the beginning, and then it starts cycling the speed. And you can see some data being sent out here and received. Uh, so once we press record on PCAN view, you should start seeing some stuff sent out. Yep. So this message right here is coming from the HUD. It is requesting speed. This is being sent uh, by the script. And one thing about the PCAN the Peak Systems PCAN devices is you can only have one software application uh, accessing the device in writing mode at a time with write permissions. You can have different software applications in reading mode or listen only mode, and that's why we have PCAN view here. It's opened in listen mode, it cannot do any writing. Um, and we have our script in write mode, so it can write to the PCAN device and send out CAN data. Uh, so we are going to stop this script since we just needed to send the supported PIDs. We'll just go ahead and stop that right there. And we can turn this off now for what as well. And let's start the BStorm client. So now we can create a project to fuzz the, uh, the heads up display here. So we'll go and create a new project and we'll call it BStorm Project. Uh, that's the default name. We'll just leave it as that. And then uh, you can choose a location for the project files to be stored. Uh, simple or advanced configuration wizard. We just need simple for now. And we'll, we will click next. Uh, just press yes. We already have something named uh, BStorm Project, but we'll just overwrite it. So now we get to see the basic configuration. So we get to choose our module. Obviously, we're not doing DHCP server because we want to do some CAN bus, some OBD2 over CAN bus stuff. 
Uh, so here we have our different automotive modules, uh, and we will be using the OBD2 over PCAN. So we will be using this. You can also import a custom module, build a network module, build a file module, uh, a web app module for APIs, or build a Canvas module. So now we have our environment variables here that we can set. Uh, the can ID, now we have this set to, to a pretty typical value that most ECUs send out. Uh, it's a it's a extended can value, uh, not a standard can. Well, this standard can, but it's the extended version uh, with the 29-bit identifier. Uh, we're not going to be using can FD. Uh, we're not going to set the bitrate switch. But what BStorm does is once it starts fuzzing with data that is larger than a standard can frame, it will switch to can FD. These other settings, the pecan baud rate or data baud rate. Uh, will be fine for our cases, but in it could be different in uh, in other cases. And now we have the PCAN device. So we have the PCAN USB, as I showed earlier with our physical setup. We only have one PCAN device connected. If you had two, uh, you would have to determine uh, which which devices this would be. So these are all editable as well. So we could change this to two if we wanted. We don't have a second device in, but so we will just leave it as one. We select next, and uh, this is some monitoring information and the saturation rate threshold, which we will leave just as 15. That's like the rate at which uh, BStorm will send out fuzzing attacks. And we will not auto start BStorm right when we finish creating the project. We will just finish the project, and here we are. So here we have the project settings with the different environment setting value, uh, environment variable values here. Uh, the module browser, as you can see, I see the different buffers that are sent out, the, com the number of combinations covered, and, uh, and just the format of the protocol, essentially. Uh, the preview here, you can see what is going to be sent out or what is currently sending out during the fuzz. And let's just, let's get on with fuzzing. So just to start fuzzing, all we need to do is press start. It's pretty simple. And there we go. So the PCAN device is now sending data to the HUD. Uh, now this HUD in particular is pretty good at ignoring uh, bad data, at ignoring invalid speed data or invalid just CAN data in general and, uh, and, and uh, malformed data. So it's not gonna find any vulnerabilities. But this is just a demonstration as to how to set up a fuzzing uh, session with, uh, with the PCAN device, with, uh, with Canvas and OBD2. So it's sending out uh, session combinations, testing the TFF with the TFF code. It'll go through with engine RPM, vehicle speed, and such uh, other values. And let's see. There's some information here, just some uh, sort of logging data. So for example, if I pause, it'll show you that it's pausing. Uh, the nice thing about uh, BStorm is you can pick up a, a project later. So let's just go ahead and save it, and we could close it out if we wanted, pick it up later, and then just resume right where we left off. So let's go ahead and press resume. It'll start fuzzing again. And now it'll be a new session. So as you can see, the elapsed time is seven seconds, and the total elapsed time is one minute and five seconds. That's because we are uh, fuzzing with multiple sessions here, meaning once you press pause, that stops the session. Once you press resume, it starts a new session. Uh, so which is really nice, you can, you can choose to, uh, if, for example, if a fuzz is taking a really long time, you just pause it, close down BStorm, come back another day, continue fuzzing. And let's pause. And I'll just show you what the report looks like. Obviously, we don't have any vulnerabilities, so you're not going to see anything that interesting uh, as far as vulnerabilities go in the report. So we go to Generate Report. You can generate it as a CSV or HTML and choose where to save the report to. By default, it's in the, uh, the your user's documents folder in a report. So Generate. Now it'll, it'll go through some project settings, some module settings as well. Uh, it tells you the module, which is OBD2 over PCAN. And the environment settings, monitor settings, control ports, default attack types, and the running time. Now, so it shows two sessions here. Uh, because we were fuzzing 
and when, then we pressed pause and resume again, so it started another session. So that's why you see two sessions here. The exception report, if vulnerabilities are found, they will show up here. Uh, obviously, we did not find anything, so it shows zero. And then the test list, which goes through all the tests that are ran for the OBD2 protocol. So OBD2 is carried over CAN, over a CAN bus, and uh, that is what is being fuzzed uh, here. So that is the that is our OBD2 module over CAN bus using PCAN. And uh, I hope you guys learned something today.